So now we start with practices, and the first is our shoes. Floor is yours. Thank you. You hear me? Yeah. I can hear myself. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Really nice to be here. So I'm going to present to you our policy instrument, the um, Regional Plan for Climate and Energy in Akershus. Uh, but um, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the process, and I'm going to also say a little about the challenges we have met during the planning process uh, and what we are what we are starting now. Uh, but before I go on to that, I want to just give you a little bit uh, of a context. So I'm going to say a little bit about the county, uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the county, um, and also a little bit about our role as a, as a regional planner uh, or developer. Okay, so we start. Um, you, you have seen this before today. So I'm just going to say uh, we are a county that is like kind of surrounding Oslo city uh, and we have 22 municipals and they are quite different both in interest, challenges, uh, population, infrastructure and you see up in the north uh, it's a little bit more rural down to the east and around Oslo is more uh, urban, uh, urban municipalities and we have about 600,000 uh, inhabitants in Akershus, and it's still growing. Um, and as you all know, Akershus County Council is a, a democratic elected body, and we have um, responsibility over dental care, transportation, education, and regional development. And it's within the responsibility as a regional developer, we have and we work with the issues of climate and energy. Um, so, every four years, we develop what we call like a regional planning strategy, where we try to identify the challenges we have across the region in every municipality, where we see that we need regional solutions in order to meet those challenges. And one of those challenges that what was identified, I think, in 2013-ish, <laughs> was uh, climate and energy. So that's why you make a regional plan for that. Yes. So, greenhouse gas emissions. I just wanted to show this picture to so show, like, kind of the difference between the national level and our... <laughs> our challenges as a, at the regional level. So, as you all know, uh, we have, have oil and gas. So, no surprise, that's one of the biggest emission sectors in Norway. Uh, we also have a lot of land-based industry, like uh, aluminium production, silicium, uh, pulp and paper. Um, but that sector has actually uh, decreased its emission a lot since 1991. And then we have the challenging transport sector. It's about 20% in Norway as a whole, but in Akershus, it actually accounts for almost 80%. It's higher than 60, 70 now. So that just being said, is a really big challenge in our region. And it's also a challenge that needs to be addressed uh, by all of the stakeholders and all of the municipalities. And I think that also speaks for the need for a regional plan to meet that challenge. So you see uh, the purple, purple color, that's the transport sector. And if you add up the light blue color, that's other mobile sources that uses fossil fuels like um, machinery that uses like petroleum. Uh, and you have the dark blue, that's uh, stationary combustion. Uh, most of it comes from using fossil oil for heating in buildings. Uh, that's not allowed anymore, so that will go down by itself. Then you have the red one, that's methane gas from waste disposals. It's not allowed to dispose organic wastes uh, in Norway anymore, so that will also go down by itself. And then uh, on the top, the green one, that is quite stable, is the agriculture like uh, fertilizer or cows, yeah. 
But as you can see, since 1991, uh, the transport sector has increased its emission quite a lot. Um, so that's really our big, big, big challenge. So making the regional plan for climate and energy, the purpose was to find common regional goals for climate and energy so that all of the stakeholders could like work towards that goal together. But also to identify measures to meet these targets, both at the national, regional and local level. It's not just a plan for us, it's for everybody, um, and especially the authorities. And um, a big challenge for a regional plan um, is that it's not binding. So, uh, even if the plan is adopted, uh, the, the municipalities, the states uh, are not obliged to follow up the measures. That's why it's so, so important for us to involve everybody in making the plan. So we make them a little bit theirs as well. So that's what we emphasized on um, making, making the plan and in the planning process. It's involvement, 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 involvement all the time. So this is uh, how we organized it. We have a, a steering group uh, where we had representatives uh, a little bit higher up from the municipalities. Um, then we had a project group, was more like a working group with representatives from the municipalities. Uh, Oslo city was uh, also represented there and the county governor. Uh, and they gave advice and um, told us how we should make the plan, what they needed, um, and so on. And then we also had uh, three uh, really big meetings where we invited a lot of stakeholders, NGOs, interest organizations, uh, industry, um, public authorities, um, so on and so on. Um, where we kind of divided into the priority areas we have in the plan. Um, and we got input on objectives, measures, knowledge, what are the um, uh, challenges, what can we do. Uh, so we made sure that the plan is realistic and that the measures actually can be implemented. And <clears throat> that was kind of the formal organization. But in addition to that, we had a lot of meetings. If the municipal said, come, we want to hear about the regional plan, we came. Um, so it, it has been a lot and we used um, two years and a half. So it's a really long time. Um, but I think it was also really important. And uh, even though we wanted to do even more involvement, <laughs> at some time it has to stop. So you have to kind of, when is enough is enough, and we hope, really hope it has been enough. So this is what we agreed upon. This is what was adopted, like Pia presented earlier. It was adopted uh, in June 2018. So this is, uh, this is where we are now, on top. You see the transport sector is gonna be um, less than the agriculture sector in 2050. And in 2050, we're going to be a low carbon society, which is actually a follow up from the Paris Agreement and the national climate law. And on the way there, <clears throat> we have to reduce 55% uh, of our greenhouse gas emissions, direct greenhouse gas emissions in Akashus by 2030. We also have targets for indirect climate, like greenhouse gas emissions, like for buildings or recycling, uh, food wastes. But I'm not going to talk about that. I have 10 minutes, so I'm just going to go on. <laughs> okay, so to the challenges. Uh, starting the process, um, we really had a strong ambition that uh, the regional plan should be relevant for our municipalities. That was one of our main goals, that we wanted the plan to be a useful tool so they could use it directly into their own work with local climate and energy plans. 
And that's also why we worked really close and involved the municipalities. The challenge there is like, um, since they are so different, uh, we cannot make the plan duty too detailed, but we cannot be too general either. It must be something they can use. So there was a balance, balance there to be, to be found. And I hope you found it. And it will be interesting to see now when the municipality starts to roll their local energy and climate plans, if they actually use the regional plan. And I really hope so. So about dialogue and ownership that I kind of talked about earlier, since the plan is not binding, is so important. And it's also, <clears throat> it's also um, challenging to keep up the engagement. I think our first meeting when we invited all of the stakeholders, there was, were about 100. The last meeting, it was 40. So it's, it's about keeping up the engagement and keeping up the dialogue. It's, it's an ongoing work and it really, it takes a lot of time. Uh, and I think now when we start implementation, uh, it's even more important to kind of uh, continue the work we did in the planning process because it's actually now that the work starts. It's now that we have to implement the measures. And it's not only about engagement and ownership. Um, when the work starts and you have to have, you have concrete measures that you have to find money, uh, it's conflicting maybe goals in the municipals. So you kind of find restraints when it all comes to the concrete measure and actually implementing it. And uh, in the end, achievement. There, there's been some other people also talking about political will, political engagement. We change politicians every four years. We need to keep it up all the time. Uh, and also we need to have a good, good reporting system and a good way to see if the measures that we use money on, that we implement, actually have an effect to reach the overall objective. Yeah, that was some of the challenges. Of course, there are many others, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So thank you.